So Kate and Sarah, one of the questions that we have all been contemplating is why is it useful and helpful to understand adolescent depression from both a psychological and a theological perspective? So I'm wondering if you can share some thoughts on that. So I think of this question from um, two different roles that I've had. The first being um, leading a youth group. And I found myself being the person that a lot of the youth would go to um, when they were suffering from depression or anxiety. Um, and I wanted to be able to support them in the best ways I could. And for a lot of them, that was the comforts of their faith and um, their understanding of the theological backgrounds of um, why that made sense to them or what didn't make sense to them. Um, and as my current role now as a clinician, and I'm when I'm looking for ways to support the youth I'm working with who are suffering and need communities and need um, ways to bolster themselves emotionally and spiritually, I want them to be looking for um, their faith communities to support them and um, teach them about what they're feeling and help them find ways of coping and flourishing uh, that they won't necessarily get from um, their schools or you know other other communities of support that they're a part of to add to that Kate I think I found it um, just so interesting in our conversations the ways in which a lot of what we talk about theologically and psychologically are the same but we're using different language to talk about it mm -hmm. and so kind of that work of translation so that faith communities can understand um, it from a, a psychological and theological perspective, I think has been uh, critical for me. I, I've just learned so much um, from from our conversations. The other piece that's really um, been interesting for me is just to, to think of um, kind of just how fragile the interior life is of, of, a, of a person um, and how close the kind of the psychological, emotional piece sits with the, the spiritual piece. You know, when when a person feels sadness or a person feels a loss of meaningless or when a person feels um, a sense of belonging, um, those feelings just create big questions. Mm -hmm. And those big questions often are, you know, is my life worth living? You know, those big questions is who am I? Those big questions is who is God and, and where is God? And, and I mean, it's, it's leading to the questions that uh, can, if we have youth ministers who are equipped, it can actually be a spiritual quest that can really open them up to such a transcendent um, kind of experience that will shape their entire lives. Um, um, I've, I was reading Lisa Miller, The Spiritual mm -hmm. Child, and she talks about adolescent depression almost as a gateway to adult coping. Um, mm -hmm. And that, um, it particularly even with kind of like the spiritual um, kind of awakening that it, could, it can have. Um, and so for me, um, understanding the psychological piece and integrating with the theological piece has made that kind of really, really clear. So I, I definitely um, found such value in the conversations that we've had earlier. I mean, just in thinking about, you do narrative therapy, we do narrative therapy too. <laughs> it was the combination of what we do that, you know, seemingly such different fields, but really, as you mentioned, we're targeting very similar ideas. Um, for me, I find that when the youth come in significant distress, they're really trying to figure out, one, where do I belong, if anywhere? And two, how can I share this pain without being judged? Mm. And it's so hard for me to see mind and body separate. And I think if we don't address that connection of mind, body, and spirit, there's no way that we're gonna be tapping into the most fundamental pain that they're having in the beginning and establish some connection before then we can even start the more evidence-based kinds of treatments that we know definitely work, but I think it's so important to ground them in a context where they feel held and where they feel understood. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think 
even just in, in the past you know, few months that we've been working together, those conversations I think have really shed even more light in the way that I ask questions of youth, you know, what coping skills or what additional supports I think about bringing for them. So to me, I think it's really critical, as you both have mentioned, for all the reasons that we really think about this in much more of a collaborative and united perspective rather mm -hmm. than as two separate points of view. 